You versus AI, is that going to be the theme of 2026? Struggling to prove your worth while the technological progress keeps marching on. And if you're thinking about, you know, maybe joining this field, is it still worth learning web design in 2026? For those who don't know me, my name's Matt and I've been in the creative industries for over 20 years, working with some of the world's biggest brands and companies along the way. And I just wanted to give you a few of my unscripted thoughts on this. When everything's changing so fast, what should you be learning? So pull up a chair just for a few minutes, join me in the studio and let's have a think about this. So when I started, just being able to get a website online was enough. That was all that you needed. I was what we call today probably a front-end developer initially. And people just knew there's a guy who can make websites. And that was enough to get me a job. That was enough to get me freelance work. Obviously, very quickly, that went away. Technology became, you know, more easy for people to get a grasp it with. Then we got things like templates came along and then social media. So people could just have some kind of online presence. And they didn't really need an expert for you know, a small business, a charity, or just an interest project to get a website online. It was only the larger businesses that Ren really had the budgets. And then people started to specialize more and more, and we have what we call the salami slicing of the creative industries, where everybody does their little bit along the way, from strategists and the branding, the front-end design, the back-end design and development and technology, all the different steps. And those were even broken up further. But today, people feel like these skills are just being eroded more and more by AI. So what can you do? Well, the first thing I believe you can do is learn to solve problems creatively. When there is a roadblock, if you can see a way through, or when there need to create interest or something brilliant or something remarkable, creativity does that. Now, some of you might feel... I'm more of a technical person. I'm not really creative. Well, this is a framework that I follow to be endlessly creative and always come up with ideas. And the first step of three is to be curious. Creative people are curious people. So you need to be endlessly curious. You need to start to develop that in yourself. That means you need to go to art galleries and museums. That means you need to uh, visit new places. That means you need to get out of the bubble that you're in and start exploring, you know, other areas of interest. That means you need to read books. That means you have to ask lots of questions of everybody you meet. That means if you're in the city, go out to the country. If you're in the country, go to the big city. And it's just having that curiosity about life and learning new things that will always, you know, feed into you. And if you take in good inputs, you're going to get good outputs. But for real creative people, people who produce, you know, brilliant design work, brilliant art direction, they're taking in high quality diet of inputs. So that's really, really important to take in good things. That's a lifelong pursuit. But the second step is to really be endlessly curious about the problem that you're trying to solve. So if you have a particular problem, so that might be a client brief, that might be something that you identify you know, as a roadblock in a business, it might just be a particular project that you're working on, you have to dive deep into that project. You have to ask lots of questions. You have to do the research. And it's about really trying to see the problem from a different perspective, from different angles, learning everything about that. You might be designing something for, you know, any particular industry, somebody who makes bicycles. You've got to go in and learn about how they make those bikes and who they're sold to and what the history involved is. And along the way, lots of little ideas will begin to form uh, and we'll come through around the question. But it's about really forming that question. It's about understanding things like brand strategy. You know, having a framework to understand how that works will really help you as you really get to depth with the problem. So the second step is really getting to grasp with the problem and having key questions that are at the front of your mind. You don't have the answers to them, but you have the questions. And the third step is to walk away and forget all about it. When you've really deep down analyzed and defined that question, just walk away 
go for a walk, go and do something else, leave the project for a few days. And when you come back to it, your brain will have made all the connections between the problem that you've dived deep into and the, the wealth of uh, knowledge and visual culture and ideas and sparks that you've built up through your curious attitude. And those two things together, I've always found I'm always able to come up with ideas. The second thing I think that is really helpful for you to learn is to learn to solve problems entirely. You don't want to be the kind of person who just says, well, I've done my job. I was done what I've asked of me. That's not enough. You've got to find out what your boss or your client or your customer, because they're the people who are going to pay you, what they really need and what they're really trying to achieve and and help them solve it, help them get to that end state where they want to be in. Now, you can thrive as a world-class specialist, but you have to be truly world-class, truly standing out as somebody who's totally exceptional, famous within that niche, within the creative and digital industries. If you're not, and most of us are not, then what you need to do is learn to solve business problems because then you'll always be valuable. If you can be somebody who takes responsibility for things getting done all the way, then that will always help you. And there's a few things you can do with this. But one of the challenges is that how do we learn all that? One thing that AI is doing is it's eroding the amount of junior positions. There are fewer junior positions now in the creative and digital industries, whereas senior positions are holding steady or some say even growing. And that is for a few reasons. One is automation of kind of more basic tasks. And the other one is that AI can be a real force multiplier for senior people who know how to use it. So they don't necessarily need uh, that team of juniors who are uh, carrying out the work because they can um, use AI to do some of that and to speed things along. So it's often hard to learn things along the way. So being somebody who's useful in the creative industries, if you're coming in as a junior, you're going to have to do a lot more learning yourself. It's not just a case of getting a junior job and kind of figuring things out over the next five years. But actually, it's a case of, you know, educating yourself and maybe making sure you really show up on the tools and you know how they work in a professional context. And that's not something that you always get at a university, which can be, you know, a lot more conceptual, a lot more abstract and a lot more sort of high level thinking and not really in the nitty gritty. The other aspect of solving problems entirely is to become a full stack designer. So if you are somebody, for example, who just designs, you just live in Figma and you love to do that and you love to craft things that look beautiful, and then they are handed over to be implemented by an app developer, by a website developer, then you might want to think about the fact that now with the tools that are available, you can learn how to properly you know, develop websites and give that whole experience to somebody from design and development. Now there's ways to then integrate uh, those tools you know with e-commerce and then people can sell they can make money from their website it might be the sort of you know app technology with all the no code tools that are available now it might be more uh, the imagery and those sorts of creation it might be working before we even start with the design also on the front end and working on brand strategy and brand identity so actually expanding your skill set and being able to completely solve a problem for somebody maybe it's a startup who's going to market you know maybe it's a business who has a really weak online presence you can help them and becoming a full stack designer allows you to solve their problem entirely rather than just saying i'll come in and design your website but you don't really know what the, the brand problem is to begin with and you can't help them implement that website at the end then that's not going to be, you know, as valuable to a lot of sort of small and medium sized businesses. And the final thing that I would encourage you to do in a world where everybody's trying to figure out how to work with robots is to learn to work with humans. And this will be a competitive advantage for you because a lot of us get into the creative and digital industries because we are happier sat behind a computer and we don't 
made me want to interact with people as much. And if you can be somebody that does cultivate the skills, that is uh, very good at working with people, the kind of people, person that somebody wants to meet up with in person, if you can cultivate, you know, skills like empathy, communication, listening skills, these are going to be really valuable in getting out of your client, your boss or your customer, what they really need, what they really want and understanding uh, that problem. And these human skills are really important. Things like learning how to sell. This is really going to separate you. If you can't sell your services, then they're worthless. So being able to understand how you create desire within somebody to get to that desired future, how you able to deal with objections, how you're able to lead through a sales process. So being able to do this, if you're a freelancer, it's crucial. But even if you're looking for a job, knowing how to make yourself really stand out as a candidate, if you're, you know, as a designer or somebody in digital and creative, uh, making products or making something to sell to customers, you have to be able to understand that selling, that sort of marketing piece of the equation. Now, the irony of this kind of learning, learning these skills is that they will all help you thrive more in this age of AI. But ironically, they will also help you become a better prompter of AI because by learning these things, you'll develop your knowledge, your language, your skills and experience. And all these things will allow you to give better instructions, uh, judge the outputs better, and also make those sort of unseen connections that certainly with current AI models, they don't always make. The human brain is an incredible thing where it can connect things from disciplines that may seem, you know, completely unrelated, uh, but you can make those sort of leaps of the imagination and then AI can be something that, you know, really assists you, uh, but you're able to bring through, you know, all of that kind of human brilliance and craft to it. In a world where everything is changing, it's all the more reason to have a growth mindset, to believe that your abilities are not fixed, but you can continue to develop them. You can continue to learn. You can continue to get better. If you put in the practice, if you put in the effort, if you follow the right principles, if you get expert feedback, then you will progress and you will learn. And if you get better and you get stronger, then you'll be more able to face you know, the challenges that we have there's always going to be new tools in a field that's based on uh, technology so we've got to be prepared to do that if you want to learn everything you ever need to learn in your teenage years and then spend the next 50 years of your working life just carrying out that knowledge then this is not the field for you there's always going to be uh, new things to learn and that attitude of learning is something that I still need to take with me now, you know, in my 40s when I've been in this career for quite a while. And embracing it is really the best way forward. Until next time, happy designing.